Chris here from Dancing Girl Coffee again here. Um, and today's video is going to be an instruction and a comparison between different kinds of, of steam wands and different ways of preparing milk using a range of different domestic machines that we have here. Um, what we found during some training sessions online, uh, some of them were recorded and, and published, is that there's a real, um, a real knack to getting the technique for the type of machine that you're using because the differences in the kinds of um, steam wands that are installed on domestic machines. Okay, so we'll start with the steam wand that's on the Esperto machine, the Lapavoni Esperto machine. So if I disengage this from the machine and bring it over to the camera, you'll be able to see that there's one, uh, one hole in the end of the, of the steam wand. So this offers a, a really precise jet of steam into the, the body of liquid and you use that to create a vortex and then you bring it closer to the surface to just push a little bit more air into the, into the milk as you're creating the vortex. And then if you put the jug deeper or the steam one into the deeper into the, the body of liquid, then you're just basically still whipping the milk around and creating the vortex and adding more heat and less air. So then you're creating the really micro fine bubble and micro texture inside the milk. And that's that's the, the most precise steam one of the, the three or four that we look at. Pop that back on there. If I take the steam one off the Euro Picola, you can see a standard that comes with Hopefully you can see that, that comes with uh, three holes in the end of the steam wand there. So that diffuses the steam coming out of the steam wand um, much more broadly across the, the, the body of liquid inside the milk jug. And again that allows you to, to just be a little bit more, uh, it's a little more forgiving with the position of the, of the milk jug that you have around the, the end of the steam wand. So you can bring the, the milk jug closer to the, the edge of the, the steam nipple there and that pushes a little bit more air into it and you're still trying to create this vortex. So these traditional machines require a little bit more of a subtle technique when it comes to preparing the textured milk. I'll just pop that back on there. Also what we've got here is a, a Lapavoni Barretto and this has this kind of automated system. Well not automated but it's it's kind of uh, it's assisting the user by having a Venturi um, system on the steam one. So I'll take the outer sleeve off and bring that over to you. The Barretto and the Grand Cafe which you'll just be able to see in the edge of the shot on the widescreen version of the video um, have this same steam wand system. So we have a small knot on the side of the machine to control the flow of steam and then this steam jet pushing down the center of this outer sleeve hopefully you can see that there and then also just on the the outer edge of the upper end of the the sleeve we've got a small hole and as the steam is pushing through that we can hold the, the one static in the body of liquid and if we have the, the hole exposed above the level of the of the, the milk in the milk jug it's drawing air in and pushing air in as well as heating the milk at the same time so it's putting a lot of air in there as you move the steam warm further into the body of liquid you can just draw the textured milk across the surface once you've put your air into the milk you know the initial um, um, stages of, of texturizing the milk and then you can draw the milk texture through this hole and that's again creating that really micro fine textured milk and heating at the same time again these are just really subtle differences in how you're operating across the machine to try and create a really micro texture of, of, the, of milk. So let me just pop this back on there. And then finally we disengage from the, from the Gagia machine. So the Gagia machine is a, is a customer's machine that we've been servicing, but it's, it's ideal to use at this point to show you that it has the same kind of outer sleeve on a Venturi system for the steam wand, but it has a subtle difference with the small cutouts on the top of there to draw air into the top and push that into as the steam jet is forced down the steam wand. So on the Gagio machine, we have a steam wand which also has a Venturi system. So as we disengage the outer sleeve, you can maybe just see on the camera there, there's these small cutouts around the top of the, the outer sleeve. And within the inside of that sleeve, there's a small groove here, which regulates the air that's been sucked in as the steam is forced down the center of this, of this outer sleeve. So we can see on the, on the end of the nozzle there, the steam is forced down the center and then we see air or liquid is drawn in and pushed into the milk so this is creating the, the micro texture in your milk so a similar but not identical system to what we look at on the Pavone machines so we push that sleeve back on there so you can see here that we're going to purge the steam one 
and then we're going to prepare milk. So there we have the milk jug filled just to the nape of the neck there. And to begin with, we're going to place the steam wand in just below the surface, but keeping these, these small air inlets on the Venturi system um, exposed. So we're going to put air into the milk to begin with. So you can see the milk to be beginning to stretch. keeping one finger against the stainless steel base of the jug so that I can check the temperature and then you can see that it's drawing the textured milk into the top of the Venturi system there. So we're now putting less air but more heat into the system. You see the size of the bubbles reducing so we're making a really fine micro texture. So you should be able to see there as we're drawing the milk across. And now I can feel that the, the milk is too the milk jug is too hot to touch. So I'm going to finish putting the, the steam through the milk. As I remove the jug, you can see there we have a nice my tamp to settle. We have a nice glossy top. And if I place a, a cup here, you can see as we pour. This is really thick textured milk. Speed up my pour and then we really finish with a really thick micro texture. And if I use a teaspoon to drag across that you should be able to see the, the density of the, of the milk and we've got quite a stiff milk that we can stand up and fold over on itself almost like meringue. fill the milk jug to just the nape of the neck here so you see we've got a consistent measure of milk all the time so you can see the difference in technique as we use each different steam wand okay so the steam wand is now up to temperature so we're going to purge through a small blast onto the So we've placed the steam one into the centre of the body of the liquid and you can still see the venturi hole above the surface of the liquid. So we open it up. And then we're just on the surface with the venturi hole. So you can there uh, you can see hopefully the, the textured milk being dragged through the, the entry to the small hole on the outer sleeve of the steam wand. Lowering the milk jug down introduces more air. You can see the milk stretching there. Deeper into the body, you hear the, you hear the difference in the steam wand operation. You can also see the textured milk being dragged through the outer pole in the outer sleeve. You can see it's making a very micro fine, small texture on the milk. I'm keeping my little finger against the base of the jug, hopefully you can see. That's telling me how much heat I'm putting into the milk. I can feel the, the outer side of the jug getting very warm now with my finger, so I'm going to turn off the steam wand. You can see a lovely glossy top to the milk there. So to clearly demonstrate this, I'm going to tamp and polish. I'm going to take a glass so you can see the textured level of the milk as I pour into the 
glass here. And then as I introduced the espresso that I poured earlier, you can still see that we're maintaining a crema on that. You should clearly see the, the level of textured milk as the espresso sits underneath that, that top layer. Okay, there we go. So we still have, I use a teaspoon. We still have a, a level of textured milk in there, which can be used to top up the, the drink. So that steam one is the same as the Grand Cafe and the Barretto. So it has this outer sleeve with the Venturi hole. Okay, so on the Europe Picola, same scenario again, same level of milk up to the nape of the neck of the jug. Much more uh, standard and traditional uh, steam valve arrangement, so there's no need to extra, uh, put extra uh, heating um, points on, on the boiler, as there is with the Grand Café and uh, Barretto. We simply purge the steam on, and then it's more about the technique and the position that we hold the, the, the milk in the jug so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that in position there and then I'm going to move the camera over to, to show you the position so we can open the steam one Through my fingers on the side of the jug, the heat into the milk there. So I can tamp and polish the milk. So you can see a nice glossy top to the to the milk there. And if I take my glass and again pour into a glass so you can see the layer of textured milk that's going to be on top of this steamed milk so then holding that there what I'm going to do is take my espresso you can hopefully see that on the camera and if I pour my espresso in it should punch through the textured milk and you can see the, the layer marbling into the milk there again we still have some textured milk remaining in the base of the jug. Okay so the final machine uh, that we're going to do the, the texturizing of the milk on is the Lever machine, um, the Esperto. So on this machine you've got a steam one with a single uh, nozzle so if I just open that you should see. Yeah, so it's, it's to offer the, the barista much more precision when they when they uh, texturize the milk so you'll see again there's a slight difference in position um, uh, that we hold the milk around the end of the steam one just to get the texture and, and get the correct amount of heat in there so first thing I'm going to do is pour the espresso with the naked porter filter on there Thank you. 
also con for consistency throughout this video uh, you can see again we filled the milk jug the same milk jug to the same level just to the nape of the neck so we're going to position the steam wand just below the surface in the center of the body of the liquid open up the steam valve and put some power and heat into the milk and then you can hopefully see that we're bringing the steam wand tip closer to the surface and this time because we've got the precision tip with one hole in it we're moving towards the outer edge of the milk jug just to make sure that we get the correct vortexing and rolling of the milk and then just across the surface we can hear that, that small tearing paper kind of noise where we're introducing air into the milk so hopefully the camera can see there it's just below the surface and we're stretching the milk now further up the jug you see i'm keeping a finger and a thumb on the side of the milk jug i'm not using the thermometer here so i'm just keeping an eye a contact with the side wall of the stainless steel jug to feel how hot the, the liquid is getting small turn paper noise not too much heat not too much air so we get a really nice glossy finish there we go so bring that to the camera you can see there's some, some larger bubbles but if i polish the milk you're gonna get a tap and a swirl so we have a nice glossy top to the milk you can see that because I've been talking to the camera I've made the mistake of leaving my espresso underneath the porta filter so we have some, some low pressure extracted espresso in there. So I'll move the, the cup to here and then you can see there's a lot of textured milk on there. And then as we free pour out we just give that a quick wiggle to free up the textured milk and pour across the top of the, the nice creamy.